Hey everyone, uh, before we get into the, today's video, I just want to point out that this video only pertains to the USB valve that I built in my tutorial video that I posted seven months ago. I want to make that clarification because there seems to be some or a lot of individuals out there buying some alternative version of a Raspberry Pi Pico and building this device and running into a lot of problems. I just want to point out and be transparent that this video is not going to cover any of those devices. If you're not using an official Raspberry Pi Pico, this video is not going to help you. And I'm probably not going to respond to any of your comments if you have issues because there's just too much on the table to try and diagnose something like that without having the specific device in hand, which I don't because the Raspberry Pi Picos are readily available and they're insignificantly expensive. Uh, approximately four dollars so there's my disclaimer <laughs> we can now get into the video installing the firmware for the usb valve requires you to plug the usb valve into your computer which i've already done which is why we have this usb mass storage device showing up because it's a raspberry pi pico and then all you got to do is head over here to the GitHub page. I'll put this in the uh, description. We're gonna head down to the release here, 19.1. And for my USB valve, I have the wider screen. So what I need is the 64 UF2. If you have the thinner, longer screen, you're gonna need the 32 UF2. If you're unsure of the screen that you have, just try both of these. You will know immediately if it's working. So we're going to go ahead and grab this. We're going to go to our downloads folder. We're going to copy this. Let's minimize and head over to the Raspberry Pi Pico USB mass storage device on the computer. And we're going to paste this in here. Now, once you paste this in here, the device is going to disconnect from the computer, which is the normal procedure for this. And this means that it's loaded the firmware. Also, if you're looking at the USB valve, you're gonna see the screen turn on and actually display some text, which what I will do is, after pasting this in, I'm gonna to cut to that and show what it looks like if you're looking at the USB valve. All right, so that's now loaded. Let's cut to the USB valve so you can see what's happening there. All right, so this is the USB valve. I have a flash drive here just to show you what this does when I plug this in after the firmware has been loaded. And here's our USB cable that needs to plug into the computer and the USB valve in order to load the firmware. Now, you've already seen me load the firmware, so if, you've, if, if you're updating the firmware or you, you've loaded the wrong firmware, this boot cell button here, you need to press and hold this when you plug this into the computer, otherwise the USB mass storage device isn't gonna show up so you can update that firmware. So let's go ahead and do that so you can see what this um, does on the USB valve end. All right, so I have this plugged into the computer. And what I'm gonna do is load the correct firmware for this screen. And as you can see, the USB valve screen automatically turns on and says self-test okay, auto run R, which is what you wanna see. Now, just to showcase this, what I'm going to do is load the incorrect firmware on this so you can see what it does on the screen. And this is how you'll know you, you picked the wrong one based on your screen type since there's two different screens for the USB valve. So I'm gonna unplug this. I'm gonna hold down this white button to get it to show up on the computer, plug it in, and then release the button. Now, if I take the wrong firmware and put it on here, what you see, and the firmware is still gonna work for this screen, but you can see the text is way larger. So, you can choose between them. 
but if you have the smaller screen that is more narrow and longer and you choose the wrong firmware, the, the, the text, I believe, cuts off or cannot be read. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to reload the 64.uf2 to this, which I think looks a lot better. So I'm going to unplug this. I'm going to hold the button and plug it back in. And then as you can see here, and hopefully this shows up well on the camera, the text is a lot nicer and fits on this screen better with this version. All right, so if you want to use the USB Valve for testing devices, I have a couple things here that I'm going to show you. Um, first of all, I have a portable battery pack here, which you can use to power the USB Valve. The number one issue with doing this is if the device has too low of a power draw, most of these battery backup packs will cut power and this will power off and I'll, I'll showcase that in a second. I have a standard uh, Samsung flash drive here that I'm going to use to plug in to showcase what happens when you plug in a device that's doing what it's supposed to do. And then I have a USB bad cable, which is off on the side here that I'm going to plug in to showcase what happens if you plug in a device that is trying to do something nefarious or malicious and what this displays. So first things first, let's go ahead and plug this into this battery backup unit. And you can see that the self-test comes on as okay, and this thing is powered on. But if you give it, uh, it's, I think it's about 30 seconds, this will just shut off. And that's perfectly normal. If you plug something into the USB valve, it will remain on. So let's just give this some time here. There it goes. All right, so it powered off because the power draw is so low that this device just stops working. And it, it's not... It's not a bug in the device, it's actually designed to do it that way. So one of the things is, is if you turn this on and then plug something in, and you can see that we got mass device and we got two plus signs, which indicates that everything is working and, and this is what the USB valve expects to happen with this device. All right, so if we go ahead and we plug in this bad USB device. As you can see, it says HID sending data. And that indicates with the exclamation points that it's doing something it shouldn't be doing. So again, if we go back to the regular device here, a flash drive, Oh, I hit the reset button, my bad. Um, that's what this button does. It says mass device. If we unplug that and go back to the uh, USB or bad USB device, we get exclamation points. So the other thing I want to show you guys is I have a modified keyboard here that is designed to run a script when you plug it into a computer. Now, here's the thing. The keyboard is just a standard Corsair keyboard, and I might have the wrong plug here, but let's see if I... Nope, I have the right plug. All right, so if you plug this into the USB valve, you get this weird screen here. And this is normal because this keyboard draws way more power than this thing can provide. Um, if you take it off of the... Actually, let me hit the reset here. There it goes. You can see that this is also a device that's sending data, but you will get these weird, um, you get these weird artifacts on the screen and I suspect it's because the device just draws more power than what the USB valve can handle. And the, the weird thing is it doesn't happen all the time. For example, if we unplug this and then we plug it back in, see, it happens there. And then it unscrambled itself. But I've noticed that if I hit the reset button here, it tends to get rid of that funny screen stuff, but I believe that this error message, well, it's not really an error message. I believe this artifacting on the screen is due to the fact that the keyboard is drawing more power than 
what this uh, USB valve device can pull. And now before anybody says anything, it doesn't matter if you have it plugged into a battery pack or a computer, it does the exact same thing on the screen. I've tested it on multiple USB valves. Um, I don't, I don't believe that this is a problem or a bug that needs fixing. Um, there's probably not too many people that are going to run across modified keyboards that are designed to run a malicious script, but it's something to be aware of that if you're trying to power a device that requires more power, this seems to happen and it, it's perfectly normal. Hit the reset button on the um, USB valve and that'll get your display working and, and showing properly. I think that's everything. If you guys have any other questions, make a post on my website at tzerf.com or leave me a comment. That being said, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in another video.